Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be creating a caduceus. Now, if you aren't sure what that is, it is a symbol associated with medicine, um, traditionally associated with healing, and it is a staff running down the center where I'm putting these purple lines, and I'm using a line across um, as a guide for another part of this. So there's a staff that goes down, which I'm doing now, and then there's wings, which I'm going to be using the purple line going across to kind of guide me on where I want everything to go. And you'll see that a little bit later. Um, my rock is shiny. It is not wet. I did have to resin it prior to painting on it because it was super lumpy and bumpy. And I didn't want this rock to be unpainted. So I made it a little bit easier for myself and resined it first just to make it a smooth surface. Um, you in no way need to do this to your stone before you paint it. You don't even need to paint a stone. Uh, you can do this symbol on anything um, because this symbol represents our medical staff right now, uh, now and always, and it's a thank you to them. So. And it looks a bit strange right now. I used a sponge to do a circular um, top on my wand up top. And then I did the tops of the wings. That's just to kind of see where I want them right now. Um, but we're going to add to the wings after we're finished doing the serpents. Now the serpents are a little tricky. You have to wind them around the staff or wand all the way down and you have to wind them around five times. So there is going to be five little circular things that you'll see on this on this wand. So here's the first one. First their heads are up there. Uh, then there's one, two, three, and there's going to be two more at the bottom that you can't see right now, but they just get smaller as you get down closer to the bottom of the wand. And that's where the snail, the snails, that's where the tails of the snakes are going to be located. So I'm just going to thicken up these snakes a little bit because we're going to outline them in gold. Everything that I dot is basically black outlined with gold and then I fill it in with the dots of color. So this is the usual uh, steps that I take um, in order to dot something. So I hope that this helps you guys and it's a challenging uh, symbol to make sometimes but don't give up. If I gave up then I wouldn't be able to post this tutorial for you guys to paint so you're not allowed to give up either. <laughs> so uh, you can't see the bottom and I'm sorry it, you will be able to see it very soon. I will make sure that um, nothing is left for your imagination. Um, I'm just working on the wings a little bit here. I'm doing three feathers or four feathers, sorry, and each one is a little bit smaller than the other. And then I'm adding a second row and you can do your wings whichever way you want. Totally up to you. But I'm basically just sketching on with my black paint so that you guys can see what the idea is. Um, normally I would just paint it all on with black and I just go from there, but uh, I want you guys to see what I'm doing. So that is that. We will be uh, outlining in gold and then you'll be able to see all its little bits and pieces a little bit easier then as well. Um, I do the same thing that I always do, which is outline it in gold, go back and, and clean it up with black anywhere that needs to be thinned out where the gold is messy or not the way I wanted it. I just go back with some black and clean it up. So in this portion, uh, at this spot in the rock, it takes a little bit longer because it's, it's where you're kind of perfecting the painting prior to color. So this, this part of it takes me a little bit longer, um, but it, it's one of my favorite parts. Getting, getting the image the way I want it before I add color to it is, is one of my favorite parts. It's the challenging part. So while I'm doing that, it kind of might get a little bit boring for you guys. So I'm just going to gab. I'm just going to talk. How's your Easter going? A little different from every other year, I suppose. Um, we did visit with a family member through our living room window, which it was nice to see them, but sad at the same time that we can't give them a hug or even go out to greet them on the front porch. It's, it's kind of sad. 
And I just found out recently that I'm going to be an auntie. And I don't even get to see my, my sister and her little baby bump um, for Easter. So it it's it's really kind of sad this year. But I'm we're making the best of it. And um, we're making a nice dinner tonight. And I got my boys and... We've got our health and everybody's healthy and happy and we don't have any sick family members right now. Thank goodness. Um, yeah, so I feel lucky. I feel like it's different, but that's okay. Sometimes, sometimes it's, it's going to be different and the kids are happy and that's all that matters. <laughs> it's a little bit tricky guys when you're doing the snake <laughs> <laughs> when you're doing the snakes wrapped around the uh, staff, you might notice it's a little it's a little tricky because you have to make it look like one snake's going behind, the other snake's going in front, and you know it's all winding around. So I got confused with that part when I was doing my gold outlining, but I did end up figuring it out. Um, but it is a challenging part. These little serpents, you know. They gave me a hard time. <laughs> they made me have two cups of coffee in a row. <laughs> so I did get a message from someone regarding this symbol that I painted um, because I posted it on my community page on YouTube that I was going to be having this tutorial out. And someone told me this symbol was satanic and that they figured I meant well, but it was offensive in some way. Um, I want you to know that this symbol in no way to me is satanic. Um, that my symbol represents uh, anyone in the medical, medical community, whether you're a doctor or a nurse or a PSW or an ambulance attendant or you answer the phones or your janitorial staff in any kind of medical environment. In the world right now this is your thank you that's what this is this is to say thank you for everything you're doing because we don't know how to thank you for what you're doing um, we can't even imagine what you're going through and I have a lot of family members in the medical community from nurses to personal support workers one of my closest friends is a nurse and she's a new nurse. She hasn't been doing this for very long and this could be very scary. Um, so this is my thank you to all of you. Even if you answer a phone or hold the door open, honestly, you deserve this thank you right now. You're there while we're at home safe. You're fighting against a war that we can't even see with our eyes. So thank you. Thank you all. This is my way of saying that I appreciate you. And hopefully when this is over, you all in the medical community can see this as um, a trophy, an award, something to be proud of. You fought for us, so thank you. I will be adding a halo, <laughs> obviously, because this medical symbol wasn't enough for me. I thought that they deserved um, a halo because they are they are angels. They are real life angels. So there will be a little extra added on to this known medical symbol, <laughs> and that's just part of part of what we're going through in the world today. So I hope you guys love it. I hope it means something special to you. Um, I hope that I've been able to uh, show you what it means to me or explain it well enough. Please let me know. Please let me know in the comments. Um, but in no way is this a negative symbol. In no way is this satanic or anything at all in a negative way. Please do not comment or come after me for that you will be removed from my channel immediately so i just want those of you who appreciate what i do to please comment let me know what you think i can take i can take your critiques um but please don't do don't um 
tell me what the meaning is <laughs> behind this stone, please. Thank you. So now that I got that off my chest, <laughs> back to business. Now I am making sure that I didn't erase too much of my gold because I did in a few parts. And uh, so I'm going to be letting some of my black dry a little bit and then coming back in with the gold to make sure everything is still there. So I didn't erase it because <laughs> we want to see each part individually, like all the feathers need to be outlined and, and the staff needs to be outlined. And I still haven't drawn my halo on there. Still haven't put that on, but it's coming. It's coming soon. So I will be leaving the eyes um, black. I'll be drawing them on with gold first and then making the centers of the eyes black. Um, but I wanted to let you know that I will be adding crystals to the eyes of this of the serpents at a later date. Not in this video, unfortunately, um, but at a later date. Um, I do resin my rocks and then let them dry for about 10 hours, uh, 9 or 10 hours. And then I add my crystals because the resin will swallow the crystals up and hold them tight while it's curing and uh, they won't go anywhere. So yeah, I used a little bit of hand sanitizer on a Q-tip to get rid of my purple Sharpie marker that I could still see. Um, and it comes off easily with a little bit of hand sanitizer and a Q-tip because I resined my rock. Uh, sometimes it's not as easy to get paint off of a rock that hasn't been resined. Um, it could give you a real hard time. Just so you know, um, it looks easy on here, but that's because it's resined. I can literally wipe it off. I'll show you right now. Uh, if I make a mistake, I can literally wipe it off with my finger and start over. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't leave any leftover paint behind if I if I just wipe it off. Um, but that's only because my rock was resined and it's been sealed, and there's no uh, little pockets for paint to soak into. So, so I'm gonna let the gold around my halo, everything. I'm gonna let it dry before I work on that some more, and we'll start with color and then and work on the halo afterwards. That'll be the last thing that we uh, that we fill in with dots anyway. So I'm gonna be going um, through a rainbow of colors. Some of you might recognize them as chakra colors as well. Um, I'll be starting at the bottom of the staff and the tail of the snakes. Um, time for color. So I'm using a nice engine red. We're gonna start with red and then I'm gonna walk the dots upwards a little ways make sure you do the staff and the tails all at the same um, same height of dots, I guess you could say. Um, and I'm going to be switching to orange and then yellow, then green, then teal, then purple, or sorry, blue, then purple. Then I'm going to lighten the purple with a little bit of pink and then the halo will be white. So you'll see me change my colors up all the way along if I'm gabbing uh, and you can't pay attention to what colors I'm using. I will have all of my pink colors listed in the description. I'll have my dotting tools in the description, uh, how I resin, everything is located in the description. There are no secrets. <laughs> I am like one of those weird magicians that is willing to share you my magic tricks. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to think of myself as a magician. <laughs> sometimes I feel like I am. I don't know how I do it sometimes. How did I paint that? That's crazy. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm trying to keep my thickness of each color uh, approximately the same height. You don't even have to dot this. You can fill it in with whatever colors. You can keep it black and gold if you like. Um, but I'm going to dot it. And I like rainbows. I like lots of color. Color makes me happy. Uh, literally, if I see color, it just instantly changes my mood. <laughs> same with glitter. Same with the sun. All those things make me just instantly happier. Um, when my kids are smiling, same thing. It's just, it makes me happy. Instantly, no matter what I'm going through. So you might see sometimes I use the hashtag, uh, I love color. And it's the truth, man. I love it. <laughs> so we're going to go in with some saffron yellow. I'm going to hold that there for far too long. 
Some people ask me to hold it there because they never caught the name of it or, or anything. But guys, don't forget the description. Don't forget the description of this video. There's a whole bunch of information in there for you. Um, it's usually like right below the video, right below. There's either a drop down arrow or there is literally you just have to scroll down and there it all is. All my information, all my tricks and tips, all the tutorials that can help you create this rock um, will all be there. And it's all just for you. So I'll be using two shades of green when I do get up to the green. Um, I just like doing that because it, it makes the yellow transition to the green a little bit better for me, for my liking, but you definitely don't have to do that. If you wanted to um, just paint in each color, each part that you can see, like each feather, you can just paint that a different color. You don't have to dot anything. You can do like a Zentangle situation inside, depending on how big you're able to paint it. Um, there's so much you can do with this. You can find someone who, in the medical field, you find out what their favorite color is and just do like a gradual uh, color change from dark to light with one color using blue or purple or red. Uh, green, you can just use one color and make this something absolutely stunning. So keep that in mind. If you have very limited supply of paint colors, it will not stop you from being able to create this stone. I promise. So you can see I did use a lighter green. It's like a light, light green and then bright green. Um, I use these often. I think I used it in my last tutorial as well. Um, I just like the light green and the bright green together. They just mingle so well. <laughs> and it does ease the transition from yellow to green a little bit nicer. But um, optional. Optional. So I've got my son uh, learning some songs on his piano. And I'm a huge fan of Adele. And I've sang a lot of her stuff in the past. Um, so I'm getting him to learn an Adele song and hopefully I can continue to entertain you with tutorials, painting rocks, and uh, then hopefully singing for you as well some more. So uh, I'm trying to get out of my shell at this time because you guys need some boredom relief. Um, so I'm really, really trying to get out of my shell, but it's not easy. I'm like a little turtle poking out. <laughs> but not all the way not ready yet I'm too shy that's why you only see my hands in these tutorials you guys <laughs> I'm shy I'm shy I want to give you stuff I want to share with you but I'm shy I'm sorry so doesn't this look beautiful now that we're up to the bottoms of the feathers we have to go all the way across with our green because we're that's what, what level we're at now. Now we're going to mingle in some teal here. And I'm going to walk the dots up a little, well, down now because I turned my rock around. Um, but yeah, you guys know what I mean. This isn't so bad, is it? And keep in mind, none of my dots are the same size. You do not have to be uh, worried about this dot's bigger than this dot or that one doesn't really look like a dot. Uh, just be free with it. Just take your time. The only time it doesn't work out is if your paint is too watery and all the dots connect together and they don't look like dots at all. So you have to be careful with your paint consistency. I do have one that really gives me a hard time. And I think it's Craftsmart. I could be wrong. I can't find it right now. <laughs> I'm looking for it. No, it's Apple Barrel. Apple Barrel is very watery. So I have to be very careful with certain paints from Apple Barrel. It's good for some things, but not necessarily for dotting. Because they like to, there it is, there's the Apple Barrel. They like to join together. And you'll see that. <laughs> you'll see that on my poor serpent's heads. <laughs> but that's okay. Nothing's perfect. It'll still look beautiful. You know that. <laughs> so the eyes are gold right now. 
Um, I will be adding crystals to those at another time. Unfortunately, I don't show you in this video um, because of when I add my crystals. So I usually resin the stone first, let it dry for about nine hours, and it's super, super sticky. Then I add my crystals at that time to the eyes um, and then let it dry for another five, six hours before I can actually take it out of the container and play with it. Um, but because of that, I would have had to have waited a whole other day for you guys to have this tutorial out. So I needed to uh, leave the crystals out for this tutorial, guys. But if you want to check out the final product... I will be posting pictures on Pinterest and on Facebook at Rachel's Rocks. And then you can decide if you want to put crystals in the eyes of your serpents as well. Um, I think I just really needed some glitter because this isn't glittery. <laughs> and I wanted it to sparkle a little bit. So, yeah, that was that was what I wanted to do. <laughs> so I will be... Oh, first I have to show you my nails. They are color-changing nail polish. So... If my hands are warm, it's they're pink. If my hands are cold, they go really dark purple. So right now, like because I'm holding on to the cold rock, um, it makes the tips of my nails purple. So it's got like this ombre effect, and, and I really like it, especially because there's purple in it. <laughs> so I didn't want to do this tutorial and not show off the color-changing nail polish that I found. <laughs> I got it on Amazon. I'll probably leave that in the link too, just in case anybody asks, because I do my own nails. I don't go get them done anywhere. So um, this is all, all all done at home. I don't even need to leave my house to, to have cute nails. Um, so I did add purple after my blue, and I went all the way up to almost the tip of the wings and the top of the wand, and I added a little bit of pink into my purple just so I could gradually change it and lighten it up as we get to the top of the wand because above the wand is going to be the halo in white. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do it all in white at the top. You definitely don't have to use the same colors as me, but don't forget to check the description, guys. Everything is there for you. All my paint colors. I'll even post the crystals, even though I didn't show you this with crystals on it. I did mention them, so I will put the link to where I got my crystals from. Um, yeah, nothing's hidden from you. Nothing. So stay tuned tomorrow for the next one. It's going to be a fun one, a cute one. And um, I've bribed my son into learning a few songs for me on his piano. And we are going to attempt an Adele song because I've um, been a huge fan of Adele since I first heard her and I've been singing her stuff for a few years. So, uh, yeah, I want to be able to do that for you guys. I'm trying to come out of my shell just a little bit and maybe with my son helping me, he'll give me a little bit of a little bit of bravery. <laughs> I could have said something else, but I'm saying bravery. I think he'll really help me. <laughs> so I'm just adding the finishing touches to the light, light purplish pink color. And then I still have to fill in my uh, halo with black. Right now, I was just letting it dry while we filled the whole thing in with colors. So I am making sure that I didn't dot over any of my gold lines right now. Just finding all my gold lines, making sure everything is separated. I'm also going to be outlining everything with black once the gold is dry. It It's hard for me because I'm very impatient when it comes to creating. I just, I have the I have the idea and I want it out and I want it done and I want to see it and I want to be like, yes, that's what I want it. <laughs> I'm so impatient with it. So, um, yeah, I sometimes don't wait for my gold to dry and I start outlining and then I make a mess and then I have to fix it and I have to wait. Um, so take my advice from someone who's experienced it. Wait till it's dry. <laughs> wait till your dots are dry before you outline the gold. Wait for your gold to dry before you outline in black. Um, yeah, just try not to be impatient with it like me. 
That's the hardest part about resin is that you have to wait so long to touch them. <laughs> so long. It's painful. I have to like roll it away in a plastic container under my bed and ignore it for hours and hours. <laughs> I know you guys know. If you've resined, I know you guys know my pain. I know you do. You don't want to admit it, but I know you know it. So I will be outlining everything with black now that it's dry. But first I'm going to do what I said, which is fill in um, the eye with black. Like I said, it's going to have a crystal in it later on, but you guys aren't going to see that. You're just going to see the black. Um, so at least you can still see the eyes, right? So the halo has been uh, filled in with black and then I let it dry. Uh, you guys didn't see that part either, but it's rather boring. Uh, and now I'm filling it in with white, white dots all the way. And then the next step is simply to leave your signature on it. You can also write thank you if you're confident with your uh, painted letters. Definitely do that. Say thank you. If you want to write a thank you on the back or uh, you can even print something out and, and Mod Podge it to the back afterwards um, so that when they find this rock, there's a little note there for them. Um, you can leave it on someone's front doorstep if you know that they're a nurse or a doctor or a janitor at a hospital. Um, maybe, maybe they're your doctor. Maybe they've been looking after you your whole life. Um, maybe they were in retirement and went back to work for this. You uh, leave them a little note if you want to. So I'm outlining everything now that it's dry. I love the color. I just love it. It's so beautiful. All that color. Once again, it reminds me of happiness and spring and new flowers and new grass and sunlight and sunshine and sunsets. That's what it reminds me of. Where do you see all these colors, guys? In everything beautiful. All over the world. Natural, natural beauty. So I'm going to put my name on here real quick. R.M. Rachel Mitchell. What a weird name. <laughs> And I'm going to show you the resined version right now. Look at that. Don't forget it changes up on whatever kind of surface you're painting it on. But look at that gold. Look at the color. Oh, what a beautiful trophy to say thank you to all of our medical workers. I'm sorry there's no crystals there for you guys to see. But check out my pictures later on Pinterest and Facebook. I love you. 